Well, hello friends, this is David with Dayfish84. This is part two of a two-part video. If you haven't checked out the first one, check that little box up there for the other video and see that one first. But if you're returning, welcome back. I hope you learned some more useful tips here. Definitely some nice catches. Always great to have you here. Again, this doesn't happen all the time. You find them when they're stacked up and they're feeding. It's like all the stars are aligning in a sense. Let's see. Now, I'm not in the spot, but I'm gonna try. See how spread out are they, you know? That one area, it's like every single cast. Um, but even from down here, I wouldn't doubt I can nail one. Gosh, it's getting the sun's going down, it's gonna get dark soon. I might have to really boogie back to the uh, boat ramp way this is going all right nothing on that one we're up into the area let's see if this works out straight up the middle let's see so that was five fish and five casts and then one with nothing this is what I talked about before we'll try a few casts if if it slows down and we don't get nothing I'm gonna throw a twitch bait in there I'll bet I can pull one more out. Man, just hard to beat the scenery. Um, look at those colors. So beautiful. Now, all these trout that are I'm getting are clearly feeding. Um, there's a strike, I think. Yep, right in their mouth. I mean, oh, lost it. They're like deep in their mouth. It's not like they're just nipping at it. They're really going for it. Okay, I see. We get another one right there. So I've actually lost count of the fish I've caught. <clears throat> I'm gonna have to look back at the, see I got one trout there, three three striper, then another striper, so four striper. And then we had the one trout, and then this spot, what is it, we got five, six, six trout, and four, four bass. I think that's, I think that's accurate. I'll try that twitch bait a few times and see what we can pull up. Oh, not yet. Oh. And that's weird, isn't it? The last two fish I've had on, hooked them and had them on, lost them. That is weird. See, I spoke too soon. It's not time to leave this spot yet. Or not time to switch it up yet. <laughs> Thinking ahead too soon. Cast a dozen times or so without a bite. Maybe you should switch it up. What I'm using right now is clearly working. All right. Clearly working. Okay, what do we have here? Looks like a decent fish. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <clears throat> These are all solid fish. I mean, I'm, I know we've gotten into trout and they've all been 12, 14 inches long. You, you gotta check every single one of them to see if they're even legal size. Look at this one. Look how far down its mouth that is. I mean, these fish are trying to 
that eat these things for sure. They're not just pecking at them or hitting at them. They're committed to actually trying to eat these things for sure. Liners set up a little differently. They've been a little bit difficult to get to. Inch right there. There we go. Awesome. Alrighty. Yep, chunkers. They're not just you know long, they're they're thick. These are thick fish. Healthy. I think the wildlife guy was telling me you can tell, he can tell from the research he's done what creek the fish is from, um, from the length averages and from uh, the shape, like these ones here, he said are fat. So there must be a lot of food, they're healthy fish. All right, let's see. It seems like I'm kind of getting them pretty good up here in the, the left part now. Upper left part of this creek. I'll try one off right there. And that was like two fish missed, and then that one. Stinks, I really am running out of light here. I don't have much time left. <laughs> oh, I wish I had gotten out here like an hour earlier. It's just been one of those days. Had to go run and get a new GoPro because of the one we lost. It was an hour away. It's the closest. Oh, there we go. They are just stacked. Oh yeah, look at that. I love it when they jump like that. that was, that's awesome, look at that. Just awesome. This one here is playing the gator and doing all the head thrashing on the surface. Some of these trout really like doing that. <laughs> Trying to throw that thing out of their mouth. Yep. Now he's doing the barrel roll. Roll of death like the gators do. You ain't quite a gator trout there yet, but uh, I'd like to meet you again when you are. Nice, thick, healthy trout. Yeah. <clears throat> again, all these trout today. Letting them go. Hopefully some of these trout will become gator trout. See you when you're 27 to 30 inches long. Or maybe somewhere in between first. How many trout do you gotta catch? That's a good question. How many trout do you gotta catch before you get a gator? A gator trout. Or is it you gotta change your method up and fish for them differently? These are all things we're gonna talk about and learn on this journey. You know with a lot of like bass fishing and pike fishing and trout fishing, there's some statistics. You know, you catch X amount of certain species you're eventually going to hook up to a big one however there is a lot to do with the way that you fish a lot to do with it you know if you just fish the same way that you do for the smaller ones and the average size ones yeah you'll you'll get a big one once in a while but you can dramatically up your chances of catching big fish consistently when you know how to fish for big fish I know that's true for, for bass and walleye and pike, trout, I mean a lot of fish. And I'm assuming that's probably the same with these. And I'm assuming that's going to have to do a little bit to do with up si sizing up my baits, bigger baits, maybe live bait, but I'm assuming a bigger profile bait's going to be the ticket on that to consistently catch bigger trout weed out some of the smaller ones. These are just all such nice sized trout. There's a bite. Oh, this one followed it a ways, I think. Right next to the boat. Oh yeah. And how can you not want to catch trout like this? <laughs> I'll just let you do your thing for a minute, all right? Just, just do your thing. <laughs> shake, shake, shake. There we go. On a 16 inch. Man. 
It's crazy. We are on it. Yeah, that one followed it for a while, I think. Picked it up a lot closer to the boat. I gotta get batteries in my my light behind me here. Getting to the point where I need it. Okay. So it's four foot, eight, five foot. So it's there in shallow. You think about some of those spots. It was like six ten to sixteen foot. Oh, oh man. Followed it right to the boat, hit it right before I was about to bring it up. It's awesome. They're just in here big time. Go nice and slow, so it's shallower here. Now, I do want to try this other bait, but that's miss just so hard when I, I've got them so actively f feeding on what I'm using but uh I know they're hitting this I just missed another one just temporarily really quick I want to try this twitch bait out on my ultralight you know I mean this is a good time to test this out because I know they're here I've just missed two real nice strikes, two casts in a row, so should be able to lock up with this. This is a very popular trout bait, and I did, uh, surprisingly with all these hooks on it, I did lose a pretty good trout with this yesterday. Oh, just lost one, <laughs> or missed one rather. So yeah, it works. But with all those hooks, how the heck do you miss a fish with this thing, you know? That's hard to understand. Part of it's because I got this ultralight. Just not sending the hooks home enough. But yeah, first cast, somebody took a swipe at it and I didn't cross the eyes hard enough. Note to self, next strike I get with this. Make sure I cross its eyes. This is the gold, like rustic gold look, color. I know the uh, pink and sartreuse is another one that's real popular on these, but seems like with this super clear water, that natural is going to be better. I'm going to, if I don't get anything with this, I'm going to try one more time and I'm going to go back to the other bait that we did. Well, it might have been a strike. <clears throat> See the hooks looped up with each other. Let's try up in the left because that's been the most consistent. Really would like to land one with this lure and this rod though. I have had this rod for gosh, how many years have I there he is. Yeah, it's fun. Because it's such a tiny little rod. Oh, it jumped totally out of the water. That was awesome. All right, I'm glad I stuck with this a little bit. I've had this rod probably 12 to 15 years. A little St. Croix rod. It broke the tip off from it once. Man, I've lost about six inches of this rod off. Just a little guy, but man, that was a fun, cool fight. Like, how do they not get all caught up in the hooks like that, those other ones? That's crazy. Jeepers. That's why I don't like using these. If I've desperate to get one to bring it home note to self this lure is gonna snatch him up but not fun to get him unhooked all right it works 
That's all I was looking for. We're gonna let her go. That was fun, but I'm going back to get a rod because I don't want to take the time to unhook every fish with this thing when I've only got a couple minutes left of fishing light here before I gotta head head back. Yeah, things hooks are ridiculous. They just get into everything. Not to mention, it really is pretty cold here, and it is getting harder. My hands are moving and functioning a lot slower. Everything's kind of clumsy right now. So one hook be a lot more manageable. All right, let's get back up there and see if we can get a few more. <coughs> really can't be here in the dark dark, you know, especially with a kayak, so. All right. So yeah, there's a stack of them in here. I think that's pretty, pretty clear. Ooh. <laughs> this is just amazing, guys. Swing and a miss. Gosh. Probably messed the lure up. Let's fix it. Yep. <laughs> yep. That's all she wrote. I'm going to put one more up in the middle. And then, uh, that way. And then I'm going to start heading out of here. Hit that spot, the point where I was getting on. And then go down the canal on the left. See if we can pick up on a, a few on the way back. But man, that's a lot of action for a short, a short trip like this. Heck, I didn't get here till four, four o'clock. Gets dark by 5:30. If that gives you any indication of what we're dealing with here. All right. Uh, we had fun in that spot wearing them out. Let's uh, start heading back. One more, one more, right there, it's the money spot, so see if I can't make it do something for me. See, now I'm back out in 18, 19 foot of water. That's why that spot's so good. That's a strike right there. Fishing in six foot of water. And it has dropped off to 19 foot. And I got really good marks of fish right beneath me in this deep water. Note to self, this is a, this, now I know why the spot's good. They like being, having access to that shallow water and the deep, deep drop off here. Yeah, there's, 18, 19 foot, and there's big marks. Real good marks beneath me here. And I did miss some strikes on that cast, quite a few of them. Kind of bringing it in and letting it sink to the bottom where I see these marks. Either big trout or some nice rock. Or gar. Always gotta try. But we are running out of time very quickly. Yeah, where'd he? This point behind me, that guy caught a big, real nice one yesterday. One of the better ones I've seen caught. Yeah, 19 inches or so. see yeah I gotta start cruising back I hate it I hate leaving a spot I know I could catch more fish but like I said we got just as good a chance hitting a few spots on the way back and I don't want to get caught out here when it's totally dark that's just not wise so let's just enjoy the scenery it's absolutely gorgeous see what we can learn and catch on the way back 
and I learned I like I really like this spot um, not just because I caught a bunch of fish but I can understand why not just the bends but the different that side creek the depth and the depth change it's like a nice flat real shallow five six foot and it drops right into 18 foot right at just a dead drop off and I am still marking looks like a pot of bait beneath me and a lot of fish 14 foot now All right, well, this is the last night for this trip. My GoPro 8 has died on my head, and the GoPro 9 that you're seeing me through right now is about to die, and it's getting dark. And I'd like to get this kayak up on my car while there's still some light. And man, we just crushed it. It was awesome. We don't even need to worry about trying to fish anymore. It's getting cold. We did awesome. just send it back and uh, so things to learn it did shut off even this second spot I should have been able to pick up the fish there I think it's still possible to catch fish now but I, I just know from my experience with other fish some fish actually get more active right at this time and into the dark but a lot of fish they have like a right about this time the bite will just stop it'll be really really hot and then just just dies and that may have happened now Time and more experience will make that more and more clear with this kind of fish. Striper, rock, they, they tend to hit really good at this time of night into the dark. Doesn't seem to affect them one bit. But uh, all together, I'm really happy with this trip. I hope that you enjoyed it. Um, this is a new area. I'll be fishing a lot. It's only 10, 15 minutes from my new stomping grounds, my new home. So we'll be out on this quite a bit. There's a lot of little creeks like this all throughout eastern North Carolina where I live that will explore the fish for different fish. You know, at some point uh, the puppy drum will be in here. That'll be real fun to come up looking for puppy drum, hunting for largemouth bass, even try catching some really big, big giant gar. And then the, uh, <clears throat> the shad fishing is going to start here soon. So we'll go out, we'll catch some shad, and when the shad are in, that's when I have some tricks to catch some big catfish. So excited about getting the shad and starting to be able to catch some catfish. The rock are going to be moving up in the rivers more and more, some of the bigger ones. So we got a lot of exciting fishing coming up. Yes, yes, we do have a lot more exciting fishing trips coming. Have a number of trips I'm sitting on right now in the editing process. But this trip was a very memorable trip to me. This was actually shot end of February last year when I was still brand new to fishing this area. You know, I grew up in upstate New York. I'm still pretty new down here. I fished a lot in Florida also growing up. But yeah, that was like my third time there. A total of less than maybe five hours on the water in this area. So really was excited and happy how that went. I have fished this place and a bunch of other creeks a ton since and I've learned so much. I actually had about 60 to 70 fishing trips filmed and ready to be edited and uploaded. Everything from trout, bull drum, sheephead, largemouth bass, record size gar, on and on it could go. Catastrophic accident with a hard drive. Story for another time. Anyway, I have learned so much about this place and I know this next year is going to be absolutely epic. Right now I'm working on a bass trip from last year, 10-2, 10, 10 pound two ounces. That's coming up next, bunch more trout videos, sheephead, talk talk, all kinds of stuff. So stay tuned, if you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing so you can get more content like this. But anyways, until next time, as always, God bless, and I'll see you on the next one.